This video is sponsored by Squarespace, an all-in-one platform to build your business online. Close that wrist and look at Bold 3 Detergent Plus. Hello, 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 hello. Hello and welcome to Moonlight Show. I'm your host, Elisa, and this is this year's Valentine's Day Art Doll Collaboration Special. In today's episode, we are going to make the perfect anime Valentine's Day doll. Can you guess who it is? Well, you've already seen the thumbnail and read the title. You probably know who it is. So let's just roll the video or so. <laughs> I like an attractive woman, someone who might look like Mitsuri from Demon Slayer. So with the fired setup and a custom face made by my dear friend Blue Pixie, I fire up my Elegoo Saturn printer to start printing the doll. Since Mitsuri is the love demon slayer, I thought she would be the perfect doll for Valentine's Day. I had to print quite a few print beds full of body parts until everything was printed. After washing them in the forbidden water isopropanol, I then cure them in my UV curing station. With all the parts printed, I put them into my doll bowl and can now prepare the doll for stringing. What I didn't see was that the faceplate did not print properly, so for now we have to deal with Mitsuri Van Go until I reprint her face. The rest of the doll printed like a charm, however, and you can see that I already added some S hooks to the wrist and ankle joints. Now it's just the magnets missing. I drop a drop of super glue into the ankle joint and then add the magnet while it's on the stack, which makes it a lot easier. To insert the magnets into the hands, for example, I put a bit of sticky tack onto a cut of Q tip and push it in. This makes things easier to handle because these darn magnets like to act up. Lastly, I add them to the back of the head already, even though I still have to reprint the face, but I want to string the doll already. With the parts now prepared and completed, let's get the spread by starting to assemble her. First, I take a shorter folded rubber band about the length of an iPhone 11 and pull the loops through both armholes and string the arm pieces like a necklace, securing the ends with some wooden sticks before threading on the S-hooks that are attached to the wrist joints. Arms are strong and she even has a hand that can hold things, because I will give Mitsuri her sword later on as well. To string the body, I take a folded rubber with the length of a hairspray can and string it by starting with the head back, then upper, middle and lower torso, where I split it to thread it through the leg holes so I can then string the hip joints, thighs, knees and lower legs. I also secure them with sticks and then simply hook on the ankle joints with the S-hooks. I'm still waiting for the face to be done printing, so let's just attach the misprinted one with some blue tech for now to show you the doll before. I really like her facial expression and I'm happy how the whole doll looks already before customizing. Shortly after I was done stringing the doll, the second face did finally finish printing eventually, so how about we start with the face up this time? I'm super excited to work on it and to breathe some life and love into her. Do you want to breathe some love into your life? I decided that I'm lonely. How about making a dedicated website to find your Valentine? With today's sponsor Squarespace, it's super easy. Clean professional portfolio gallery designs will make sure you can create a beautiful website. And you can even make password protected areas to share with your true Valentine. Uh, kind of your typical research mathematician, I guess. Never accidentally blow up pictures Ooh. like a love bomb, thanks to image blocks. Images will automatically be sized and scaled to make sure they always look great, no matter how you place them in your content. You can just drag and drop them into position. And if you want to, you can even connect your social media accounts by just changing the links and icons so that your Valentine can also check you out on social media. And I want to rock with you. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash moonlightjewel to get 10% of your first purchase of a domain or website using my code Moonlight Jewel. That's squarespace.com slash Moonlight Jewel. Code Moonlight Jewel. Thank you again, Squarespace, for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back into the Valentine's video. Thought I told you never to call me here. <laughs> With a faceplate already covered in a layer of Mr. Super Clear, I first dust on some micro glitter to give the skin a magical glow before using my soft pink pastels to apply a lot of blushing on her. Mitsuri is chronically blushing, so I wanted to incorporate it into her face up as well. I add the blushing to the cheeks and pull it over across her nose area too. With the blushing looking neat, I then take a brown pencil and start sketching out the eyelines. I kept the reference from the anime on my phone next to me to try to match it as good as I could. I also draw the small little lashes because I won't be gluing 3D lashes, since they don't look as good on anime style dolls. Before starting to fill in the eyelines, I also sketch out the eyebrows. I try to give Mitsuri the signature cute worried eyebrow look. 
When I was satisfied with my sketch, I then used my matte black acrylic paint and carefully fill in the eye lines and paint the lashes. It's a bit tricky to get the right consistency of the paint because you want it not to be too thick but also not too watery or her makeup would look like she ran through rain. The little dots underneath her eyes can't be missing either. And now I have to copy, mirror and paste everything onto the other side. <laughs> I wish it was that easy. When that was successfully done, just the mouth is left and I use different shades of red for the inside of the mouth and tongue. Yeah, you can't really see me painting the tongue here. I'm just filling in the tongue. In the end, I finished the teeth up with some white. And then it is time to glow up the doll with some pearly shimmers. I apply them to the cheeks of the face to give her that extra magic touch before sealing her one final time with Mr. Super Clear. Now the last thing to do is to add some gloss to her lips and waterline using my Liquitex High Gloss Varnish. While the gloss is drying, how about we make her eyes? I made the template for the iris on my iPad, printed it on some paper and cut it out perfectly round. <coughs> it's no problem that it's not as perfectly cut though because it won't be visible anyways afterwards. Then using my half sphere mold, I use the 15mm mold and fill up about two thirds of it with UV resin and remove bubbles with a lighter. Then I take the iris template and put it upside down on top of the resin. Now that has to cure for a couple minutes underneath my UV lamp. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm very professional when working. <laughs> After curing we can demold and wow, pretty anime eye, yay! Now I just need to make a second one. Here's Mitsuri's finished face and the finished eyes. Let's put the eyes into the face already. Ah, oh, it looks so much like her already. I'm so glad. Now we can start making her clothes. Let's start with the skirt. I already cut out the pattern piece for the waistband and first fray check all edges so they won't fray. <laughs> when that was done and dried, I cut some notches into the upper seam allowance and will now glue them around towards the inside. With the piece done, we can put it aside and then I ended up making three different patterns for the skirt because it did not go as planned, like always. <laughs> The million dollar question is now, which one is the right pattern? A. The classic stripe B. The digital bow stripe C. The manual bow stripe Or D. None of them The correct answer is C. The shape of the stripe gives the skirt a flowy look and makes the pleats look pretty as well. With a pattern cut out from fabric, I then glue around the bottom seam allowance first. And then it's time to pin all the pleats of the skirt. This took a while, but by pinning them accurately, they will look really nice later on. I also clipped them on the bottom for easier handling while ironing later. And then I throw them underneath my sewing machine and hem the pleats in place. After that, I steam them into position so the pleated skirt will have the signature look before pinning on the waistband finished sides in. I pinned this a little lower because I recognized that the skirt is a bit long, so I'll sew this here and just, just cut this off afterwards. And with a closure in the back added, we have a really pretty flowy pleated skirt. It was again harder than I thought to make this, but hey, it paid off in the end. <laughs> For her skirt, I will however need her belt as well, so let's make it. Since I couldn't find a buckle in the size and color that I needed, I decided to cut one with my X-Tool M1 blade cutter from a PVC sheet that I topped with white vinyl because I didn't have white one. <laughs> I cut some more in case I mess up and then free one from the sheet. It looks really pretty and hopefully will do the job. Here I added a little pong made from a paperclip wire and just painted white as well as the edges of the buckle. And then I can add the belt that I made from a folded glued together fake leather stripe. I added a little hole already to thread the pong through and then just pull everything in place and secure it with some uwu glue. I also added a little belt loop to the belt and decided to finish the belt holes with tiny eyelets. I didn't have white ones so I used black ones and will paint them later. For easy insertion I put them onto a toothpick and then can relatively easy push them in. And then I just hammer them in place. Looks good! Let's paint them white with a finger wipe to finish off the belt. And with that, the belt is done. I really like that the little fake buckle did work out like this in the end and that it looks so, so nice. Yay! 
Next, let's make her blouse. For the blouse, I first cut out all the pieces from white cotton fabric and fray check them. Then I can take the bodice of the blouse and sew the darts in the front first. Looks nice so far. I cleaned up the collar already off cam and now sew it onto the blouse, finished side to unfinished side, so I can later fold it around towards the front of the blouse and glue it in place. With the collar nicely ironed in place, I take the sleeves where I already cleaned up the bottom seam allowance and sew them along the armholes finished sides in. Awesome! Now I can fold the sleeves and side seams together finished sides in and also hem them. Before turning the blouse inside out, I like to cut a notch in the armpit so the fabric doesn't bulge weirdly there. With the help of a chopstick, I then flip the blouse inside out. Taking my beloved Uhu Alice Kleber, I now just have to glue around the front and bottom seams of the blouse. For the round parts, I cut notches again before applying the glue and pressing the seams in place firmly. And then I just glue around the bottom seam allowance as well and press it onto my work surface to really flatten it out. And with a small closure edit, the blouse is done. I added a sew on snap button on the bottom and an elastic loop with a bead like I did on my silver veil doll dress on top. And I added fake buttons with glued on half beads. Let's make Mitsuri's Haori next. I cut out the pattern pieces already and will first hem the back seam of the jacket finished sides in. I make sure the seams are nicely steamed in place and can now add the already cleaned up sleeves to the bodice. I marked where to sew them onto the jacket with little notches and then just line them up on the bodice and sleeves. With both sleeves hemmed in place, I now fold together the sleeve and side seams and will sew them together finished sides in, but will leave a gap along the armholes along the sleeves and the bodice. After sewing, I also glue around the gap seam allowances so they stay nice and flat. And before turning the jacket inside out, I cut away some of the seam allowance along the corners so they will look nicer when flipped around. And then I just turn it inside out using a chopstick again for the corners. Using the chopstick as a magic wand, I then flip around the second half of the jacket and now it's just the seam allowances along the bottom, front and neckline left. I also just glue them around with my Uhu glue and then the Haori jacket is done. It's a super simple pattern, but it looks just so cute and clean with all the invisible glued seams. Let's make the uniform jacket. I'm first cleaning up the bottom seam allowances of the sleeves by gluing them around before adding two folded white fabric stripes for the signature sleeve look of the jacket. I also simply glue them on and set the sleeves aside to dry. For making the rest of the jacket, I first need some fabric prints, so I set them up in the cutting software and cut them with my dad's professional plotter. After cutting them, I have to weed out all the excess vinyl of the plots. They are always cut mirrored, because I will flip them around when ironing them on the fabric. I then place them on the pattern pieces underneath the heat press, so I can iron them on. With the press heated up, I then push down the lever and iron it on for 20 seconds and then wanted to show you how I peel it off, but only had one free hand and apparently a song stuck in my head. <laughs> With the pieces prepared, I decided to clean up the collar first. I cut notches into the upper seam allowance and then glue it around towards the inside of the collar. Now we can already put the prepared sleeves onto the jacket. I kind of forgot the darts, so let's sew them real quick. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, I forgot the darts, but it's not a big deal. Then I just sew the collar on finished sides in and can then fold the sleeve and side seams together finished sides in as well and also hem them in place. And then just like with the blouse, I have to glue around the front and bottom seam allowance of the jacket to clean them up. I then also add a little button closure of cam and will now glue on the little golden buttons. For these I use some golden nail art half beads and glue them on with my Uhu glue. I glue one, two, three, four in total. And with that the jacket is done and I think it looks so nice. Let's make her stockings next, shall we? Okay, so I have the print here and this is a tights, a green tights. <laughs> And I will iron this one to the tights for the socks. Let's do it. I was really hoping the iron on stripes would work, but I guess you just gotta try out stuff in order to see if it works. So I iron them on, pull off the transfer vinyl, and end up with a nice and clean print. Next, I have to cut out the pattern piece from a printed fabric. 
Then I take some dark green stripes that I cut from dark green tights and already cleaned up and sew them onto the top of the stockings finished sides in. And then I can fold the stockings together and sew them along the back seam finished sides in. And with that the stockings are already done. I'm glad the print did work out and it also works with the elasticity of the fabric. Yay! For Mitsuri's Geta shoes I printed some flat shoe soles that Blue also kindly made for me and first spray them with white because I ran out of white resin. <laughs> I let them dry and end up with nice and white shoe soles. For the straps I take pink fabric stripes and fold them like this and glue them in place. I then marked where I want the straps to be attached to the shoe sole and will tie some pink embroidery thread at those spots and double knot them in place. I then glue the loop together on the back and clip it in place until it's fully dried. Now I can add a second strap and another one at the 90 degrees angle to make the loop along the heel. I glue it together with some Uhu glue as well and cut off any excess. For easier handling I remove the upper strap and will now glue the pink embroidery straps and the heel strap onto the sole. To make the shoes look a bit nicer I cut a sole from white felt and slit the front and will now glue it on top of the sole to cover up all the straps. To make the tiny ribbons on the ankle strap, I glued around all the edges of a small rectangle first. Fold it like a zigzag and then insert a needle in the middle of it before wrapping the thread around it a couple of times and securing it on the back. I then just glue a tiny cleaned up fabric stripe around the bow to cover up the thread. With both ribbons done I take the ankle straps on which I already attached a small velcro and glue the ribbons to the center of the strap. And with that we have some pretty shoes! The split toe is actually fake because it wasn't possible with socks on her feet, but it will look really nice in the end, trust me. Before we finish the doll with the wig, let's make Mitsuri's katana. I found a cosplay print file on Colts and scaled it down and printed it. It required me to assemble the sword, so I insert a wire to the sword with some contact glue first. I know Mitsuri's sword is actually more like a whip, but to make my life easier I went for the classic look here. <laughs> when the wire was inserted to one side of the sword, I then glue the other half on top of it with more contact glue. And to make the upper seam less visible, you could say seamless, I have a very strong sense of humor, <laughs> I decided to add some UV nail polish to smoothen out the gap. After curing it, it looks nice, so we can now add the handle. It printed so nicely and the tiny hearts are so adorable. I assemble it by gluing the blade into one side of the handle and then glue both parts together. And boom! This is starting to look like a sword. I also add the cap to the back of the handle by gluing it on. The last thing missing is the guard which I will be adding after painting. I then take some pink acrylic paint and paint the hearts of the handle the cap and one half of the blade pink before taking some tealish minty color to paint the rest of the handle with it. For the guard I use my liquid golden paint to paint all the edges of it golden. And then I fill in the inlays with the same shade of pink that I used on the handle. I add some black to the rest of the blade of the katana. And when everything was dried I can apply some glue to the inside of the guard and carefully slide it onto the sword and glue it in place. I also painted the top and bottom of the sheath pink and the sword actually fits into it perfectly. Now the only thing missing are the tiny kanji on the katana. To make them I print them onto some white decal paper, carefully cut them out as close to the kanji as possible, dunk them into some water and wait until I'm able to slide them off. Then I carefully place them on the sword, trying to be as exact as my X-Acto knife when inserting its blade into my fingers while crafting. Since the pink on the print was a tad darker than the blade, I decided to paint over the decal with some more pink paint. This was super difficult because the kanji were so tiny and I am a far-sighted grandma so yeah, not easy for me. <laughs> In the end it turned out really nice though and with that we have a really cool katana. It's just an accessory, but if I were to make a cosplay of Mitsuri, I also would have made the sword. <laughs> In the end, I also added a little loop to the sheath, so I can put it on the belt later. Okay, one more thing to make Mitsuri's wig. 
For that I will use the one-eared face model to not accidentally ruin the face up and already made a wig cap for her. For the wefts I combed out some yarn hair but didn't straighten it to have more fluffiness for her super fluffy braids. I then glued the wefts in place and decided to only then add the ombre effect with pastel chalks to really see how far I could drag the green without having too much of it in the end. It was a bit tricky like that and my fingers gradually became greener and greener but it gave me more control. I then add a second weft and apply the green again as well using my hand because it was a bit easier to handle this way. And now I fill up the whole back of the head the same way basically. When the back of the head was filled up it looked like this and now we can add all the frontal wefts. But before doing so I already decided to braid the braids so that the hair was out of the way. I just sectioned the hair into three braids and then each braid into three sections to make one braid. Pretty self-explanatory and easy. On the bottom I just tie them with a clear hair tie and then cut off the end with a sharp edge. To make the braid fluffier I pull it a little and it gives the braid some extra fluffiness. With the holy trinity of braids applied on the wig I can finally glue the front of it. First I add the remaining wefts that go to the back but keep them short so they don't go into the braids. And then I apply the first wefts to the bangs. I then flip them up like this, which already looks absolutely perfect in my opinion, <laughs> and will now use the technique Chris taught me in my last video to create voluminous bangs. I use my thin curling iron to iron the hair upwards and then place a wire where I want to fold the hair. I flip the hair over and iron it downwards using the curling wand as well. Then I remove the wire and add the gradients and cut and style the bangs in shape. For the final wefts I add them towards the bangs of the wig and then flip them over in the opposite direction, flattening them nicely with my curling wand again and setting everything in place with hairspray. And with that Mitsuri's wig is done! And so is the whole doll actually! It was such a fun project and I am now simping for her even more than I did before. <laughs> May I present to you Mitsuri. Here's my version of Mitsuri. I hope you had fun watching the process. And if you are hooked now to Valentine's Day art dolls, make sure to check out all the other dolls by my friends Jackie O, Holly's Dollhouse, I Could Do That DIY, Steppo Doll, Cloud Dolls and Blurred Colors Art. Everyone did such an amazing job and all the dolls are so so pretty. And again also thanks to all of my patrons. You guys are just so incredible. Thank you so 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 much. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video and happy Valentine's Day. Bye! <laughs>